this is pushing against the tide then, isn't it? Well, it's stupid o'clock and how are you doing? Yeah, it's definitely salty lass living with the tide, which as Beverly says means that you get up at silly hours in the morning. I mean, see, dawn is just cracking and we're already out at sea. <laughs> but uh, we had hoped for some wind and we hope we'll get some wind later. But at the moment, I'm afraid to say it's motor, which we don't like, but you know what? It is what it is. going um it's going very well just, the speed has just dropped down to 6.1 knots it was 7.2 so with a bit of luck we're going to make our waypoints we've made our last one with uh, 10 minutes to spare so we're hoping we make the next one and if we're ahead of time so much the better we don't want to get too far ahead of time because going round the head too early is as bad as going round it too late you, you've got to get it We've got a, about a two hour window, which is in the sort of nice sweet spot. And we are aiming for the middle of that window. And ideally that's what we'd like to do. Yeah, but because um, we're, we're going to be, we're, ta we're sailing at the moment, we'll probably have to tack. Oh, but almost certainly. Speed's dropped to five and a half, but we predicated the course on 4.5 knots. So as long as we stay above five knots, we should be ahead of schedule. Yeah. at the sea state uh, one of the things that we look for is ruffles in the water and you can see ahead of us that um, there's no ruffles in the water there's nothing happening so um, the wind had already started to die and because we know that we're going into an area where there's no wind um, we've just dropped the sails we don't like dropping the sails but it's just um, no, it's just reality, you have to deal with it. Well, the engine's not working very hard and we're still doing 5.3. Yeah, we, so what, uh, yeah, so the engine's not working hard, but we have got um, a north going tide. So some part of that component will be tide or assist. Um, but yeah, you've just got to work with what you have, the elements, the tide. But like I say, we look at the sea state all the time and it's nothing happening ahead of us. Until we get up toward the point and then the sea looks quite black on the horizon. It does. Um, so that'll be a lot of disturbance. Yeah, so that could be because we're getting to the walls ahead, but we'll, we'll check it out when we get there. But at the moment we're going to no flat, flat, a lot of flat. But, that is amazingly different from what, a couple of minutes ago? Yeah. The conditions have changed again and we've only got what, another five minutes later? Yeah, five minutes later and we've also got 24 knots of wind. Uh, we've got the Jenny out with the reef in it and we're up at seven knots, correct speed over ground. We're motor sailing uh, because to be quite honest, to use the sail it's taking us that way and we really want to be going that way but it's putting that much speed on us that we'll take what we get and then we'll drop it and go back in and the extra distance we'll come out will be more than compensated for by the distance we've come north yeah so it's just amazing just um you know we had that no wind on the thing and then that dark patch is strong wind on the sea oh. causing, causing the sea surface to ruffle a lot yeah so but, 
we're very close hauled and we're actually pinching a bit uh, just to try and stay in as close as we can to the land uh, but as soon as the land starts to diverge away from us the seal will have to go away again and it'll be pure motor This is pushing against the tide then, isn't it? Yeah, because you can see it running. Well, you look a little bit done in, Beth. Oh, I am totally done. I am admitting to things. Um, fair head beat me today. Uh, probably my own fault. Um, if you believe the pilot each to the last minute or even the last half hour, you're a fool. I know that, but I trusted it to be right in somewhere like this. I don't know why. And we arrived bang on slack water, and no matter what we did, we could not get past that headland. We tried seals, we had the engine wide open throttle, we were going backwards with everything we did, and in the end, we just decided that we could do what in the flying business we used to call push on itis. We just try pushing on a bit harder, push a bit more, and push on itis kills pilots. And sure as hell it will kill boats because we were either going onto the headland or winding up in the big races at Rathlin. Um, so in the end, common sense prevailed in the middle of a big squall, and we just jagged the boat, and now we're going back down the North Channel again. Um, there's a little bit of debate as to whether we'll anchor in Red Bay or go back to Glen Arm. Personally, I'm brain dead and I just want to go back to Glen Arm and vegetate. <laughs> well, after that little escapade, I'm so glad Beverly has not got me on soup for lunch today. <laughs> I'll tell you now. What was meant to be second breakfast has become brunch. Yeah, it was, you know, we were supposed to be in at second breakfast. Not a chance. <laughs> this is brunch now. <laughs> but yeah I'm so glad it's not soup I really need to have something a bit more substantial and I think I've got it everything you saw on the video happened yesterday and what we're going to do here is we're just going to fill in the gap between the overfalls behind Gainer and all of a sudden we're going south. There's a big gap in the video record there and the reason for it is that we tried everything. We had the seals up and down three or four times, we've been swept toward rocks, we've been swept toward bigger overfalls and we just didn't have the time for the camera. Um, the chart plotter has recorded some our track and you can see in our track we were all over the place because we were manoeuvring, get the sails up, get the sails down, try different tacks of wind. We had the engine on wide open throttle for about half an hour. Mm. And it was a case sooner or later that something was going to go pop. Bus, the boat, the engine, something. So eventually, when we started going backwards even quicker, we just called it a day, jibed the boat, because I think we still had the sail up at that point. Yeah. And um, we just simply ran out of there at 10 knots hmm. and went south. And we were pretty brain dead, to be honest. So we got back in here yesterday and we just zonked, didn't hmm. we? We did. I think the takeaway point from all this is that to get round Rathen you need a bit of tide with you. Yes. Um, it's no good going at slack because I don't think slack really is slack at Rathen. Yeah. Also, one of the uh, pilotage, because uh, we've got quite a few pilotages, um, one of the pilotages recommends to go through at um, Belfast plus uh, 330. Um which um, actually it's no earlier than Belfast plus 3.30 yeah no earlier than uh, Belfast plus 3.30 and that's what they said is the ideal time and I think you need that so that you've actually got the flow going with you because 
the top of her head is actually quite a big piece of cliff. It, it goes a lot further than you think. It's, it's just a, not sort of tick a left turn and you're around it. And you're around it. It's a lot further than you think. And I think you need that tide um, to go through. So Beverly wrote out our package plan. And uh, what she'd done is put in the waypoints um, and she'd put in our positions as to where we wanted to be at that time. Um, and then in our um, actual log, we took our positions whenever we were for those times for the waypoints and we made sure that we had made each waypoint. Yeah, that way if we're behind then we know about it or if we're ahead of time we can just sort of like compare ourselves. And, 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 and our third waypoint was after Tor Head, just before Fair Head and we made it early. We were well ahead of time. However, um, we were already, our speed had dropped to 3.7 knots. Now, when Beverly had made the passage plan, um, she'd worked it out that, you know, if we were making, say, 4.5 knots, which is quite conservative, really. Um, so we should have been fine. And at that particular point, we were doing 3.7. But after that, we just got slower and slower. Um, and um, we just weren't able to make up the extra time. Some, Even, of, some of it could have been the 25 knots of wind we had right on the nose. That can't have helped. We've had strong winds on the nose before and it does take a knot or two off your speed. It certainly does. Um, but we also think um, that we had some, either maybe a counter current that's certainly not uh, marked in the um, diagrams, but we certainly had um, some kind of tide against us in addition but it could have been the fact that it was caused by the wind or it could be just that the tide they, they call it slack but it's actually an early run hmm we don't know that's one of the reasons that we would love um locals um to put comments in down below so that you know we all learn from uh, our mistake <laughs> yeah if you sail this area i mean you know doing a northward passage and going then going west along toward valley castle um i mean According to this chart, we should have been all right up to about 11 o'clock that particular morning. We, you know, we yeah, should have had slack water there until about 11 o'clock. We didn't. Not a chance. You've seen the video. That was at half past nine. The tide was already starting to come out. And um, that was the difference between the tides. Um, but um, regardless, even on the other side where... You know, we had confused water. Sometimes we were speeding up. Sometimes we were slowing down. And we were so close. Oh, we were within spitting distance. I could taste Valley Castle. It was that close. I could see it in front of me. I could see the marina. Mm. But the um, Irish Sea Pilot, one of the things it was saying was um, that the tide rapidly changes um, at uh, Fairhead. Uh, at Fairhead, uh, one of the difficulties is that when the tide changes from going west to going east, apparently it does it extremely quickly. Mm. Um, so you don't get like a fall off of tide. It's almost like somebody flicked a switch. Mm. So going on from here, um, we're not going to attempt it again. Um, the reason we were going to Bally Castle in the first place was to move ourselves 20 or 30 nautical miles further north toward our goal of Scotland. Uh, and then we just have a shorter trip to Scotland. As it is, we've just got a longer trip to Scotland because we can go from here. And we've got no particular reason to go to Ballycastle now. After this storm passes, hopefully we'll have enough fair weather for a couple of days and we'll just have to make a long trek all the way up. Um, the other reason that we were going uh, in the early morning one was um, it worked out that the evening one, the evening tide, we would have actually be getting into um, the top of the tour head at sunset and... That's just not a time that I want to be going around that area. Yeah. Um, but now what's happening is because we're going to be, we're going to stay here for a couple of days because there's a, a storm on. Um, but now what's going to happen is um, the early morning tide will be very early on and we'll just carry on sailing. We'll just do a full run and just find out where we find, end up in Scotland. Yeah. So um, it's... Get a few boat jobs done, tidy up after that, and just sit batten down the hatches till the storm passes. Yep. So, um... See you next week. <laughs>